Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the finest Dawn of War Soulstorm cast. This is Adavis Yorkshire. And today we've got a 2 versus 2 versus 2 on Mortalis. Over in the Team 1, shall we say, uh, we've got some Necrons by Kemak and his teammate, the Blast Furnace, as the Orcs. On the Tubber team, we've got Alchemand as the Space Marines and his ally, Papa Smurf, as the Tau. And from the last remaining team, we've got Slinger94 as the Imperial Guard. And we do have Phoenix as the Space Marines. So for 2v2v2, it's probably the most apt kind of special match that we can do for our 2k subscriber special. I want to thank everyone for joining me on this journey as we go forward into making Dawn of War relevant again, maybe. I'll, I'll get some MAGA hats done, but I'll, I'll change the words. It'll be, it'll be great. Uh, so yeah, so this this will be an interesting match to watch because obviously you've got three individual teams, all are pairs, so they're going to have to use their unique combination of units to, well, to, to, their, to their best interest really. We do have a heavy bottle to it going to go down here, going to deny the Orc player his relic for the early stages of this game. I mean, with Orcs and Necrons, not really sure what kind of synergy we can expect from them. Maybe some Storm Boys and Flayed Ones, the whole deep striking stuff. Space Marine and his Tau ally. Well, obviously, I imagine there'll be some good, decent, long-range capabilities going on over there. Or maybe Space Marines might focus on some close-range nonsense, whereas the Tau go for long-range. And Imperial Guard and Space Marines down on the other side. Well, you know, it's just guns and stuff, innit? Guns, tanks, and all that jazz. Anyway, Big Mech is going to see these Space Marines, and these Space Marines are going to keep these guys away from the Heavy Bottle Turret for a little while, while it gets finished up by the service up. These guys are just going to wait for some more Slugger Boys to come over, while the big mech tanks the damage from the turret. He goes in to spank it. Do have a Tau Commander moving forward as well, going to help his ally, firing away into the Slugger Boys, as the big mech chomps down the Space Marine, chucking him away like a old can of beans or something. Do have some stealth, stealthy suits as well. Force Commander moves in to give him a little bit of a, a little bit of a kiss and a tickle on the backside. I will warn you now, this is going to be quite a long game. But that's what we like. We like a good old meat grinder of a match. Necron Warriors moving in. I've got some yellow trousers on. Going to be slapped around by that Force Commander as these Slugger Boys break the morale of these Space Marines and chase them around in the base. So few resources being lost from the uh, turret over yonder. Slugger Boy is still chasing after the Tau Commander. While these Space Marines from the... Is it? Ah, yes. Yellow Space Marines. So Imperial Fists taking that central critical location over there. As the Slugger Boys continue to smash around in the Red Space Marines base. Let them fight. That's probably what the... Uh, what one of these teams is going to be doing while one team is fighting the other team may as well just sit back enjoy the view and build up your own forces every team does have four strategic points in their base as well as a relic so big economies can be expected in this game necrons in the base now a little bit overextended as the slugger boys have been taken down or retreated do have some grots Trying their best to occupy this Force Commander while this Slugger Boy is doing what he can to run away from the Force Commander. Also, these got Haha, <laughs> I quite like that. And uh, the Grots are also engaging the Space Marine squad as well, which is... It's just, it's just good to see them getting involved every now and then. Here we are, Grots doing uh, Gork and Mork's work before they retreat away. We do have Necron Lord as well going to assist in the Space Marine bashing. Morale has been broken. We have some Tau Fire Warriors joining in the mix. Going to get some more lads into their squad. Well, the Necrons try their best to get close and personal. The Force Commander doing a Benny Hill with the Necron Lord. Slugger Boys have now been all but ma all but wiped out, more or less. Blast Furnace calls for his ally to fall back. Necron Lord teleporting back over into the boys' hut. And the listing person is now good for you, assaulted by a good a good amount of ranged combat. And this is going to be quite a difficult situation for Blast Furnace to be in. Two versus one at the moment. Necro player is going to go for a Forbidden Archive and start getting some flayed ones out, which is exactly what you need to take on these Fire Warriors. While this is going on, what's what's the uh, what's the crack of these guys? 
Uh, Imperial Fist just, just building up their, their forces. Going for a good plasma farm at the moment. And going to go for tier 2. Imperial Guard going straight for mechanized command. So these guys are just sitting back nicely. And teching up, getting all the big toys out. While these guys are spending all their money and resources in fighting two for nil. I imagine in these 2v2v2 situations, you kind of want to bash the other teams, but not commit too much into the fight. Otherwise, you then end up making yourself weak for the one player that you're not fighting against. But we shall see how this pays off for them. I mean, Space Marines, if they commit too much to Tier 1, they can just go for Tier 2 and then get a missile launcher or two for their squad. So they are quite tactically pliable. Sure, boys, now on the field. Do have some explosions going on over here. I do believe it's a cancel building. A pile of guns being built up. So some big shooters, looks like it. Payroll Fist trying to capture the critical location in the middle. We'll try and push away these scouts. Don't seem to be doing all that well. A quick look at the economies. 70 and 76%. This ally, 92 and 20. The Tubber team, 98 and 30. 85 and 30. And then, oh dear, oh dear, 124 and 79. And 110 and 60 for the Imperial Fist. So, the, uh, how would we say, a bottom left-hand team, they've certainly got the huge economic advantage at the moment. Also going for that tech advantage with some heavy bolters. But you've got to bear in mind, it's that while you're fighting and whatnot, you do kind of get into the rhythm of fighting. You get, you get, how would, how would, how would one describe it? It's kind of like, um, if you've ever played Apex Legends before, some of you might not have, but essentially it's a, it's like Fortnite, but for grown-ups. And if you are avoiding combat, and you're just kind of like hanging around on the map, uh, you, you don't kind of stretch your muscles out. So like, if you get surprised by a sudden engagement, you're kind of caught, caught a bit off guard. So these guys, while they are, yes, they are engaging in a lot of combat, they are keeping their minds combat ready. Whereas these guys, they might not have that combat awareness going for them. Might have struggled for the micro, but then again, Space Marines and Imperial Guard don't really need to rely on micro too much, especially when you've got the Bassies out. Firing away, just being a real nuisance here. And the Space Marines and Tau have decided to fall back a little bit as the Storm Boys move towards the back of the Space Marine base. Going to see if they can cut down on this power farm a little bit. But this is a lot of shooty bits for the shoot, uh, Storm Boys to deal with, so they will fall back over there. Have they gone for the... Oh, they haven't got a knob yet. So they will not be able to have access to the power claw if they so have gone for it. Heavy weapons team over here, gone for a Laz cannon. Maybe a little bit premature. We're not seeing any... I want to say any vehicles as of yet. Played ones jumping in. But being made very short work by the sheer amount of space marines on the field. But they will do their bit. Necron Lord now jumping in. Very, very low on health. Our duty calls, Shazla. He does some, what, one singular Fire Warrior Shasway firing from a distance. Very impressive distance, might I add. That's one thing that Tau will be able to really benefit from in this match. We'll be able to use their allies' line of sight to improve their general ranged capabilities. Which is nice. John Cena being coming down, forcing these space marines to engage in close combat. They are going to go for some heavy bolters as the shooter boys move forward with their big shooters. Tower moving around the side. Storm boys also getting involved. Our duty and calls, the Tau fire warriors will be tied up as quickly as humanly possible. Fire these shooter boys are not having the best time against these heavy bolter space marines in the... Is this heavy cover? It is heavy cover indeed. Blade ones though, sticking, sticking it to the man, keeping... These Space Marines on their toes. They will not be able to catch them in a straight up run. But they will be able to keep them distracted as the big shooters of the Shooter Boys fire away at these Tau. Do I, do I have a, I assume like a mine... Oh no, not a minefield. That's a, that's a Basilisk getting involved. Space Marines over here now being engaged by some flayed ones. Do have some Grey Knights smiting or smirting these uh, flayed ones. Orcs still in the base having a grand old time. Fire Warriors trying to spread themselves about as they fire away with their plasma rifles into the green hides of the of the horde. Yes, my lord. The I'm expecting some big units as well from all these players as 
This game will go on for quite some time. I hope, I hope, I hope that we see the unlimited Slugger Boy research from the Orc player. That would certainly be a treat for the eyes. Going for a machine cult for the Blood Angels. Are these Blood Angels? What symbol have they gone for? No symbol? Oh, no symbol. Fair enough. They're, they're just red. Red or dead, baby. I do quite like how their team has up uh, the Space Marine and the Tower also red. It's very, makes it very useful to identify who's on what team. John Cena him going down here, but not quite going to yes, stop boy. this back heavy butter turret from firing away. I, oh dear, oh dear. An orbital bombardment from a distance going to destroy that obelisk. Maybe a bit overkill, but... Hey, her. Uh, why not? No, Librarian not has been finished. I did well. He's red for some reason. In the Imperial Fist chapter. There's probably a law reason for that. Big Mech going to be replenished. So everyone just kind of chill. Well, these main teams that have been fighting just chill out. Go for tier 3 over yonder. All the flayed ones have been bopped. Enhanced target finders. A couple of units being... Well, a couple of buildings being destroyed by the unrelinquishing fire of the Bassies. And that's what we like to see. And I imagine as well, if we can have a quick look at the Imperial Guard's economy. Yep, that's a lot of blue, a lot of green. Saving it for other technologies and whatnot. Also, we'll be able to spend it on some Earth Shaker rounds. I mean, who needs to do any flanking or jumping over nonsense when you can just destroy everything from a great and impressive distance? And if Ariel's coming out for the tout, they've gone for a Kion command post. So looking for those impressive hammerhead tanks. Rhino transports moving in, packed to the brim with the Emperor's finest. Double Space Marine squads jumping out. Flayed ones are going to come out. Currently un... How was it? What I would I say? Un unmanned, more or less. They are, they are very low on numbers. Trying to get a surround on that Rhino, but not quite. Very unfortunate. Space Marines jump out once again. Forcing these flayed ones back home. One singular Necron Warrior with seven health. Doesn't get any health regen, by the looks of things. Will be killed. Straight away... And the Orcs are very much... I mean, I suppose this team is, is not having the greatest of days. They are being sandwiched by both the Space Marines here and the Space Marines here. Very difficult situation for them to be in. And I imagine that now with a weakened Orc player, both these teams might come to some sort of truce and try and annihilate both of them. Got some prize on the field. Will try and aid the Orc in their defence. Well, mind you, these players, or the or the Imperial Fist player and the Imperial Guard player, won't notice that this fight's even going on, because they won't have vision of it. They don't think they will. Oh, no, they will. Never mind. Oh, because I've got the critical location. Smack bang in the middle. Yeah, so they'll see all of this going on. They'll know. Full-scale war also for the Imperial Guard player, so some Lehman Russes will be imminent. Big old boomy bits from the orbital bombardments. This is a sad day for all Orc kind. It's no longer October. What special month is November? It's, um... It's, uh... I don't know if you have this in, in your country, wherever you come from, but it's Movember. Uh, where you, you grow a, a moustache for some sort of cancer or whatever. Uh, well, cancer awareness. And, uh, I, I... I'd take part in it, but I've got a moustache all year round, so I don't really see the point. I'm always repping. We're all the depot going down. Some Urgrins as well. Mars pa Pan Command. Basilisk sitting nice and snugly in the Imperial Fist base. Firing away at the Necron Monolith, which is not being repaired at the moment. Unfortunate. Space Marine player falling back a little bit. Not going to engage too much the Orcs. After all that we say, if you commit too much, you will get them... You'll, you'll, you'll be double teamed. command demanding 
needing that critical location in the middle being decapped, which is giving the bottom left team some serious vision. Bombardment continuing towards the Necron base. Let's see how the economies for all the players are going. So, time from this team. Uh, 150, which is quite impressive for a Necron player, and 45 build speed. Uh, 98 and 20 for the Orcs. Uh, 151 and 95 for the Red Marines. Uh, 151 and 39 for the Tau. Uh, 156, 106 for the Imperial Guard. And 229 and 95 for the um, Imperial Fists. So that's... Yeah, that's quite a serious economy going on for the Space Marine player. Well, the Imperial Fist player. It's quite hard. i would be quite interested to see how these players are going to take them on. Necron Monolith has gone infiltrated. Uh, the I do believe it's the Necron Lord who has the ability. I think it's like a Night Shroud. Anyone near him has like a infiltration, which is, to be fair, a very situational thing to have, but exactly what you need if the... Imperial Guard players plan to bombard you. Point us at the tank. tank Buster's now on the field, anticipating the Land Raider as it comes onto the field. Grand Squad moving in. I did my idea. Oh, we're having a whole blooming engagement going on over here. Double Dreadnought's been dropped in here. Kadra Headquarters being smashed around. And what a turn up for the Bucks. Got a whole bunch of stealth suit teams. Quickly as they can, try and smash around these dreadnoughts. Terminator squad as well getting involved. Land Raider doing what they can to defend their Smurf comrades. But a Bane Blade is also coming in. HQ relic units, well, not HQ, um, high quality relic units on the field as we anticipated. Sniping away at this Land Raider. These Tau are doing what they can. To be fair, they are, they are chunking away through itself quite quickly. But even with all the damage that they're doing, it will still take a little bit of a while to smash up this Bane Blade. Bane Blade currently not being supported at all. We've, we've got very little in the way of uh, regular old guardsmen on the field. Which is which is a bit of a shame, to be honest. If you had like a whole squadron of guardsmen, or, or just like a whole battle platoon supporting this Bane Blade, that would be some serious damage for them. For the tower player to deal with. Another dreadnought being dropped in. Kadra headquarters being rebuilt over yonder. Yeah, a lot of the tech buildings of the tower are being destroyed. But the Bane Blade, though, it's not having the best time. So this is giving the Orc and Necron player valuable time to rebuild their forces and also gain some sort of economic advantage. Listing post over here, going down. Terminator squad's been spawned in. And from the... From the Imperial Guard phase... Yeah, okay, fair enough. They do have some lads in the Infantry Command. But they do need a little bit more. They've only got a squad cap of... Well, of 12. And they've only got 9 Infantry units worth of lads on the field at the moment. Could have spent all this blue money on just spamming out Guardsmen. Mars Pan Command going to go down. Yeah, huge economic misplay from the Imperial Guard here. Was too comfortable with the Basilisk play. And this is what I mean. If you're not keeping your mind on combat, if you're getting too comfortable just being out of combat and not getting involved, you will eventually lose temper. Would temper be the right word? I don't know. None of the words I'm using are even half correct. Imperial Fist Stronghold in the Imperial Guard base. But these Assault Terminator veterans don't give one iota of care. They're just going to go in and slap everything around. Lehman Battle Russ. Lehman Battle Russ? Lehman Russ Battle Tank. I will warn you that I'm pre-tired, if that's even a term, uh, for, the, for this cast, as it is quite a long one. I'm looking at that counter going on down there, thinking, ooh, there's so much more Dawn of War to, to cast. In this one singular match here. Nefarial looking on in disgust at these humans getting slaughtered. 
And yeah, it does feel like that the Imperial Guard has been absolutely annihilated in this stage of the game. Necron Monolith, an invisible one. Didn't see that coming. Just going to be slowly but surely annihilating anything it can see over here. I do quite, yeah, it's, you don't normally see a Night Shroud, and it's, well not Night Shroud, whatever the infiltrated Necron Lord Rin Archive tech is, but it's, it's perfect choice for, for this matchup. Very much appreciate it. Loads of Predators, loads of Dreadnoughts, it's tank on tank on tank. Land Raider over here being repaired by one singular servant, so I will be joined by his friend, colleague and fellow slave to the Mechanicum. Predator with a whole bunch of last cannons, trying to push back that Land Raider. While this is going on, the Orcs and his war boss are now joining in the fray. Whole knob squad, but to be decapping this relic. Venting the space we play from doing anything. Got loads of played ones in the Red Marines base at the moment. So they were about to capitalize on slaying the Imperial Guard player down here, but the Orc player has managed to save them just in the nick of time. Whether that was their intention or not. Two Spider over here gonna be taken down by the Predators. Orc War Boss rallying his squad for Mighty War. Langbusters firing away at these dreadnoughts. While the Storm Boys get pushed back. Blade ones on the back lines. Being spanked and harassed by these Grey Knights. And a Dreadnought over yonder. Do manage to take out that Sacred Artifact. Well, it does look like... In fact, actually, yeah. And, and the Pariahs are also going to go and kill the Machine Cult. So, definite technical damage being done by these lads on the northern side of the map. Rise on their way out. Can't really teleport about. They are faster than other Necron Warriors, but... Not have access to all the teleporty goodness. Gonna go for extra vehicle armor, so potential squig offs on the field. Yeah, we'll probably be seeing all the relic units in this game. Tower back's coming go gonna come back up. Kion Command Burst as well. What now? Do see a couple of Lord Destroyers. We'll be able to simulate the machine spirits of these predators. Be a real nuisance for them. Dreadnought now out on the field into the Necron base. Going to be boomed and blasted by the Necron monolith. Got a lot of ghost turrets in the base. Will be a real difficult thing to assail from a vehicle perspective. Ah, while it's going on, a greater Narlock on the base on the tower now going to get some some revenge on the Imperial Guard and the Space Marine player who decides to assault their base earlier. It's going to waltz on in. Slow as you like. And just kind of... Yeah, he's just going for a stroll. Isn't that nice? But giving the tower player some vision, allowing these fire warriors to fire over the mountain... Got a big old blue nuke. Slowly but surely. Annihilating and eviscerating all guardsmen. You believe that is a one shot, one kill for the low health of the Imperial Guard models. Great Annihilock not having the best time there. Bane Blade trying to get out. While this is going on, the Orcs are once again pushing into the Red Marines base. Got a fighter bomber somewhere. There we go, way, way over here. The range on that bad boy is nothing to sniff at. Dreadnought trying to zone these guys away. Well, the Lord Destroyer is occupying this Dreadnought. We'll decide to move back to, back to the Necron base to... How would I say it? To repair it. As these flash gets the big war boss moving on in. Lots of Daka, lots of boomy bits. Orcs have gone for a much more ranged, orientated fair. Well, he says that, but they've got some knobs as well. Knobs teleporting around with the big mech. Gonna see if they can hold this land raider in place as the ethereal moves forward. Going to be in a dangerous, precarious position. We have lots of 
Pow. Stealth suits. Doing what they can. Orcs once again being pushed back. And no one singular team can get a hold on anyone, really. Every time one team pushes out, the other team starts moving in. No one's got the critical location in the middle. So everyone's vision, they won't really see what's going on on the other sides of the map. Although they will be able to see explosions. So that will give them a slight indication as to what's going on. Dear, oh dear, we do have a full-blown restored monolith in the base. Just... Wrecking face. We've got some immortals as well hiding around the backside. It's going to help with the destruction of field commands and vehicles alike. Terminus is kind of chilling out in here. Oh, in fact, this might not even be a real one. Hold on. Um, is that a real one? It is a real one. Oh, okay, fair enough. The Seaver could sometimes throw a fake monolith. Not this time. And there we go, a fake one being popped down there. Gonna hopefully absorb some of the fire from the nearby fighters. We have a whirlwind on the field. Providing long range artillery support. Predator coming out once again. It's a case of do you. When a push fails, or when you've def su successfully defended a push, and you've got a little bit of squad cap left over, do you go for the same kind of unit compositions? Do you try and switch it up? I imagine switching up would be a would be a good idea. But like, what kind of compositions would be ideal for all the players? I mean, I suppose for space being player, it's, it's just get all your terminators out. Get all your predators, land raider and whatnot. But even then, like like if the, if those unit compositions are working, then they would they would have already won or at least done already a significant amount of damage. Have to be a bit. There's going to have to be a bit of a thinking outside the box for this one. I think. Might be a case of. Ah, oh, see, I don't I don't even know. Would you forego? Your predators, and by just a, a just a smorgasbord of land raiders, not land raiders, um, land speeders, equip them with like anti-building nonsense. Just jump them in, focus fire down on all the economy buildings, and then jump out, and just keep on doing that. It's a hard one to say, really. What is going on? Another great Nalok moving into the base, just kind of chilling. Once again, moving in more or less alone. We do have a Krutox as well, though. The enemies of man a great big red us. monkey. The well, of man they're all birds, aren't they? Uh, are, are the Krutes. The There's a lot of dead Imperial Guards. That is something. Fire Warrior team. Over, over on the other side of the ridge. Using the eyes of the Narlock to fire... Whatever they can. Doesn't seem like they're getting too much in the way of success here, though. As the Bane Blade firing shells the size of men. How's the economy going? 160 and 60% for the Necrons. Uh, 125 and 70 for the Orcs. Uh, 110, five, what, 115 and 74. Uh, oh dear, dear. 83 and 79, so the Tau have certainly suffered economically during this exchange. Uh, 117, 78, and 146, and 129, sir. Imperial Guard and Tau player down here probably suffering the most economically. But that is because they are in constant engagement at the moment. Tau seem to be not wanting to hustle with that tussle at the moment. They are able to see over the wall, so anything that the Tau builds over here is just not going to survive at all. Stay more or less for the space being played. Although then again, the monolith doesn't really do all that much damage to listing posts. And if there's one thing that the... How would I say? One thing that the Necron player is lacking is artillery. 
mean, Orcs have it in spades. I mean, those fighter bombers just have insane range. Bit of a squig off on the field. Orcs now massing up. And what's, what's their current squad cap at the moment? Could get some more boys. There's potential for more boy players. Team Spider now getting back up. And dear, oh dear, it's been landlocked in the Space Marine base. So no matter what they want or do with, with that Team Spider, they won't be able to get it out until they commit to a serious assault. They shooting us. Squig off leading the way. Firing with its big old zap cannon. And look at the sheer amount of damage it does in close combat. Like that is... I'm not sure if it does... If it's like the most damage of any one melee unit in the game. I'll have to double check that off the Great Annalok when it comes out. But mind you, with the concentrated fire from the Space Room player. Has gone down quite a lot in the health department. Real Guard not pushing out. Ah, there we go. Yeah, the Great Annalok, 600 and 800. Oh, hey, compared to the... Oh, hey, I mean, 2,000 potential oh, hey, damage boss. from the Squig Off. Oh, hey, Who for the bomber? Uh, there we go. We, we've, we've, we've got the Orc uh, invention, uh, blooming, whatever you call it, the uh, tech. We can just get unlimited amount of Orcs. So, I imagine my frame rate will suffer at some point during this game when all the dead bodies... Come amassing. But it's going to be quite, quite, quite an epic slog. As no matter what the space we play it does, there will be more orcs. And it's just a case, just a very, very slow push for the orc player. So it's the only matter of time, really. The space marine players and the Imperial Guard on the tower really have to do something to annihilate. This art player before he just comes. I guess for an epic charge into the Space Marine base. Green boys, even the Grots are getting involved. Squig off. Jumping about. Big Mac teleporting the knobs in. Flash gates firing in support. What are these assault terminals? Well, just regular old terminals are, are holding the line. Squig off not having a huge impact on this side of the map. I have to take it on listening post. I will go for a second one. While the land raider is focusing more or less on annihilating these knobs. And I am going to swap to the a different team because all we will hear is the orc saying all here boss. Over and over again. Well it will be quite rhythmic. It won't be the most enjoyable sound. More orc streaming from the boys huts we off being repaired by the Grots. Got some tank busters in the corner, all casual as you like. Tomb Spider going to go down once again. What is going on? What's going on over here? We've got another epic engagement going on. Greta Narlock managing to get towards this Bane Blade. And it does a fair amount of damage in close combat. Just giving the Bane Blade a high five to the face. No mercy for the Bane Blade. We also do have a Deceiver in the, the Imperial Guard base as well. Causing mischief and mayhem, turning these Terminators against their own. Bane Blade has gone down. The Tau now able to build up their strategic points again if they so choose. Great and Alex still very, very high on health at the moment. What is going on? The Orc player is still swarming into the Space Marine base. Great Annalok now turning its attention to the Orcs over yonder. We'll make it slow way into close combat. These flash gates flashing their tits at the Great Annalok. Big old blue mushroom coming down. Forcing the flash gates back. Not really doing any damage, but certainly getting them out of harm's range of the Red Marines over yonder. Looted tanks ready for blasting. Fighter bombers as well, causing mischief on this side of the Space Marine base. But all this is going on. I mean, the, the Necrons really aren't doing all that much to support the Tau assault here. I mean, they're not on the same team, but they're at least causing a little bit of mischief, a little bit of mayhem. 
which makes defending against this tower assault all the more tricksy for the Imperial Guard. Spaceman holding on for dear life as the never ending bombardment from the monoliths continue. Warboss having the best time of his life. Surviving longer than we've ever seen a war boss in any of these games. Orbital bombardment going down over here. It's right smack bang in the middle of all the orcs. Absolutely throwing them about. Good lord in heaven. Couldn't even tell you what was going on at this point. It's just boomy bits. Scooty bits. Slicey bits. Staunch line of, of armour for the Red Space Marines trying to push these guys back to whence they came. A stolen Predator for the Necrons. While it's going on, some Flash Gates are going to try and harass this land raider over yonder. We have a lot of heavy bottle turrets being built up over this side. For defensive and possible offensive reasons. Lehman Rust Tank now going in over here. Necrons have decided to turn their attention to the Tau player. Going to certainly give the Imperial Guard some breathing room. He says as this Lehman Rust just kind of just wanders into harm's range. Bane played now back on the field. And the floor is just awash with green bodies. I mean, you literally can't see the floor over on this side. And a big swarm of boys coming in. Going to do what they can. War going to go on down there. Increasing the overall damage. Morale. Health regen. All that jazz. These orcs are going to be a one hell of a problem to deal with from the Space Room player's perspective. And it's just absolute carnage. Mayhem and mischief. Spring off back on the field. What is going on? Space Marine player, the Imperial Fist, is now going to go for an assault on the Necron side. You have a big old blue bit, which has managed to, at least, at the very least, push a lot of the Orcs backwards. Squigoff taking some Laz Cannons to the face. The Chapman moves forward to inspire his comrades in arms. This is quite a serious assault from the Space Marine player. Not sure if it'll be enough, though. Apparently, this is what the Flash gets like best. Dreadnought moving into the Orc base. Won't survive for very long, though. It's a, it is a veritable stalemate at this point. Going on over here at the moment. Space Marine on Bane Blade. Standing as one. Real Guard don't have a... Oh, their HQ's over there. Fair enough. Gonna go for tier 3, eventually. <laughs> this, is what we like best. this is just a lot of dead orcs. This is what we like best. But the Space Marine player is looking somewhat fatigued. Lacking in regular old Space Marines. Orcs and Necrons have managed to pull the, well, push the Imperial Fist back. Baneblade moving forward to support their allies. Ah, oh, there we go. Essence of the Nightbringer onto the field. Is immortal and does regen health with every slice of that dark blade. While this is going on, I will have a, qu a quick quick drink as I've been talking for a good nearly 40 minutes now. Ah. Recording this on a Saturday morning after a night of very, very heavy drinking. Scouts I mean, it's my birthday weekend, so I'm allowed to, to do this. You know, it's... it's uh, and it's also a celebration for 2K uh, subscribers. 2,000 beautiful human beings all coming together to watch and enjoy some Dawn of War content, which it's just nice, isn't it? It's nice that this game is still going on. It's nice that people are still playing it. Even if they never, ever make a new Dawn of War, all the mods going on. We don't really need them, do we? We don't need big AAA companies when we've got beautiful people like us doing things and whatnot. 
Anyway, I'll be honest, I have no idea what's going on. It's just, it's just, everyone's just killing everyone. Everyone's having a good time. I'll have a quick look at the economies. Uh, what team are we on at the moment? Ah, is it, ne is it Necrons? Oh no, it's Space Marines over here. So Red Marines, 138 and 61. Uh, 83 and 67. So Tel still recovered from their economic destruction. Uh, 86 and 75, so Imperial Guard are also suffering quite a lot. Uh, 107 and 80 for the Imperial Fists are not too bad. Necrons, their economy's fine. Well, to mind you, their plasma generators are looking a bit worse for wear. Might want to destroy a couple of those just so you can get some fresh ones out on the field. Uh, oh, and 76 build speed. Then we have 122 and 52 for the Orcs. So, yeah, that's a... That's a thing. And it seems like that the Orc Tide has been stemmed somewhat. I mean, the, the fighter bombers still just having a grand old time. They're slowly but surely shot up by these scouts with their sniper rifles. Squig have just taken a bit of a water break. Basilisks moving into the Imperial Fist's zone of control. While the Necron Lord swans in. And this Necron Lord has been putting in some serious work this game. Tomb Spider will be able to... I wonder how much... Ah, so yes, the Necrons have gone for maximum infantry at the moment, or maximum squad cap at the moment. But with their Tomb Spider, they will be able to exceed their squad limit. Papa Smurf is throwing out a save our souls moment. Blade being zapped and boomed by the ethereal. That's a lot of stealth suits. Primed and ready for killing anything tanky. Lots of deep strikes going on. Dreadnought's been dropped in. Almost leapfrogging their way over each other. But the Bane Blade has gone down, was locked into position by these Terminators. Predators over here facing the exact same fate as these Dreadnoughts are Beyblading themselves around, spinning to win in an aggressive manner. Terminator on Terminator action, trying to terminate each other. While that's going on, the Orcs over here are being blasted, kitten fisted by these orbital bombardments. If I can get like a little bit of an angle so we can see all the combat going on. We don't miss out on any of the action. I love it. Oh, well, it's insane that. It's quite calm over here now. Terminators forming a staunch line over yonder. Trying to de de defend their Imperial Guard comrades. Necrons don't seem to be doing all that much in the grand scheme of things. Might want to maybe push in and, I don't know, maybe like assist or something. Although, mind you, though, if the Necron player can just, like, I don't know, maybe like, like capture a strategic point start building an obelisk, all these guys could kind of like teleport on top of it. Which would be a huge inconvenience for the Space Marine player. Orcs still pushing in. Greta Narlock on the field now. Once again. I wonder who would win in a fight between a Squigoff and a Greta Narlock. I mean, the Squigoff does a significant amount of damage. But then again, it, it's pathing is, let's be honest, it's pathing is just bloody awful. Basically, getting it into a place where it can do damage is quite, quite difficult. Whereas the Great Analog is a little bit more nimble. His bottom heavy is this lad. Got a rump that can shake anyone's stump. Stronghold going to be slowly but surely whittled down. Servitor is going to try and build it back up. Great Analog coming in for defensive purposes. These guys are going to teleport over here. See if they can push off these servitors while a bunch of scouts with sniper rifles do their business. Yeah, if the if the Necron player just took these immortals and just moved them slightly over this way, this red space player would have real difficulty. Essence of the Sea Vet now out on the field for the Necrons. Turning well, I mean it's not not, not out on the field, the, the Necron laws turned into him. Temporarily causing mischief and mayhem in the Space Beam base. Now the Imperial Guard base as well. 
Ox continuously funneling in into Space Marine or the Red Space Marine base. Quick off being repaired by these morale shaken grots. Stealth suits trying to provide supporting fire from a distance. Well, all these attack drones, or, ha or should I say harbinger drones, do what they can. Very good against infantry. Yeah, you can see it in the Space Marine players' base, I suppose. It's very slowly been whittled down by the constant aggression from the Orc player. Whereas, I suppose, okay, maybe I've slitted the Necron player a little bit too much here, because he doesn't really need to take part in the fighting. He just needs to keep this defensive line going. And uh, keep his allies safe while he, while he just gradually whittles the other players down with his constant supply of orcs. Which is a viable strategy, I guess. I mean, it, it's certainly bringing down the red space room player. It does seem like that the tower have got their strategic points back up. Their economy will be a little bit happier at the moment. Uh, I do apologise. Uh. Yawning with excitement. Like I said, I think I've had maybe like five hours sleep. Gonna be a heavy weekend, my friends. I've got a very good friend who's uh, turning 70 today. And uh, we'll be celebrating his birthday as well, sir. So. At 70 years old, he can, he can drink like no man's business. But let me tell you. When he, when he goes on the dance floor, he can shake a tail feather as well. Our duty calls, down. These Terminators just being constantly bombarded by the very slow, almost comically slow moving missiles and fighter bombers. There we go. Greta Narlock stomping its feet. Oh, oh there's, there's, there's two. When could you have two? My con hold on. Um, from the tower perspective, ah, one of them's fake. Oh. One of them's fake. Is that something that the field can do? I have no idea. Oh well, you, you learn something new every day. Orcs massing their numbers. Got to jump in. And slice away at these. Well, not slice away, shoot away at these scout marines as quick as they like. Restore Monolith now pushing out just a little bit, just see what's what's going on in the greater wider world. Do have a good chunk of Lord Destroyers. And my god, the, the greater now just, just sounds... I, it, it must be an ethereal thing. It must be. Necron Lord, I don't think, would be kind enough to make it... Well, the essence of the, of the Deceiver probably wouldn't be kind enough to make a fake Greater Nihilok to help the Tau. Or maybe it would. I mean, the Deceiver, that, that, that's kind of a, a thing that they would do in the form of just making jerks and whatnot. Orcs are trying to push forward, but it seems like that the Space Marine player has managed to stabilise quite significantly as well. Put some minefields, upgraded the listing post, and I think as well these scout marines with sniper rifles are doing a really good job uh, keeping the orc tied at bay. What the orcs won't realise, or I suppose won't focus too much on because of all the pure chaos that's going on, the, um, yeah, just, just the subtle sniper rifle fire of the scouts taking out all the slugger boys. I do feel very sorry for this tomb spider because unlike, say for example, the flayed ones when they come out of the floor, when they're deep striking, those guys have got like an invincibility frame until they uh, get to moving. Uh, whereas the Tomb Spider, the moment it starts flickering, you are able to fire at it and it does start, to start taking damage instantly. That's one thing you've got to keep in mind when you've got your Tomb Spiders out on the field. Make sure that they die somewhere where you can rebuild them safely. Basilisk still firing away at the Necron base. Don't seem to be having all that much impact on this game. I'm wondering if maybe a big, big old bunch of sentinels, like a hunting squad of them, just to move in surgical position striking on any particular high threat targets. 
Mind you though, the Basilisk will be amazing against these Orcs once they do get into combat. Quick look at the old economies. Um, oh, we'll, we'll start with this team. So, 124 and 121 for the Imperial Guard. 103 and 66, and that is a, that is a big flirt for the Imperial Fist player. So he can just basically auto-replenish anything and everything that he wants. Um, 76 and 72, still with a big flirt. Uh, 118 and 37 for the Orcs, still a huge flirt over there. Um, 166 and 139, not as big of a flirt in the blue money department, but green money, they're totally fine. And the tower player, yeah, struggling with the blue money, but not the green money. Which, I mean, makes sense, because they have had to constantly replenish their infantry units. So at the moment, these players over here, economically, are doing all right, but the Imperial Guard players still not really buying all that much. If they just got, like, if they... Hold on, what's there? Yeah, so, so they haven't really bought a second... What would you call it? Uh, infantry Command. But they, I think they don't, don't even have one, to be honest. Not that I can see. But yeah, if they just got... If they just packed their rafters full of, Im full of guardsmen... There will be a serious fighting force to be reckoned with. I mean, they could just probably just walk into this stage of the game and just and just kind of like just walk over everyone. Lots of destroyers being harassed by the whirlwind. I've just been constantly firing all this game. Whirlwind over here being pestered by the fighter bombers. Um. You quite like I've got two Necromonliths here that have already been. Oh, sorry, sorry, three Necromonliths with two others being built up so that they can instantly replace um, uh, the Restore Monolith when it falls. Also allows the Necrons just to constantly pump out whatever units that they want. And at the moment, while yes, there is constant fighting going on over this side, it's kind of to be expected now. It's it's uh, it's as calm as a battle can be, with, with with as far as the orcs are concerned. They probably just also rallied over to a certain area, and attack moved as and when necessary. Imperial guard, kind of just chilling at the moment, allowing these tau. The tower also just kind of chilling out over here. But again, the moment that these guys start moving, Imperial Guard will probably move in with their Bane Blade. Royal Wind has been smashed. We'll build up another one. More Sluggers. Obelisk going to, going to go down from this Land Raider. Since of the Deceiver. As well as I assume that's a fake Monolith. Oh, let's have a look. I, I can't tell. Damn it, Deceiver. Right, is this you? Yeah, are you the fake one? Yes, you are. Good. Now, this base being player is getting kitten-fisted. This is not, not, not what he was expecting. Teleporting a whole bunch of immortals into the base. Certainly giving him some of the wrong un. While this is going on, oh, well, heaven forbid, while this is going on, the uh, Imperial Fist play is kind of just like a counter strike. Deep striking all the Terminators, all, all the Dreadnoughts and whatnot. Hard to catch all the action on a match like this one, there's so much going on. Yeah, it's just an absolute wipeout for, for the Necron player. Losing a lot of his plasma generators. Orcs over here. Would usually try and come into support, but these two busy fighting the other space we play over yonder. And this is going to be quite, quite, quite a close one. Necro player doesn't need his plasma generators as such at the moment, as he's got a good flirt at the moment. He's got no infantry units there, and lost a significant amount of his 
squad cap from losing his uh, obelisks. It'll be a real problem for him. Orcs teleporting in. Nob squad trying to bash around these Terminators of Grey Knights. While this is going on, the Bane Blade is moving in. The enemies of man cannot stand before them indeed. Briars are out on the way. And it does look like the Necron player will be going off into that good night. Unless the Orc player has something to say about it. But what can one do against such reckless hate? Against such such a brash, a brazen violence. Necromonlith coming back home. And yeah, that, is, that will be all she wrote for the Necron player. Trying to get some Builder Scarabs out. The enemies of man cannot stand before if they can get some Builder Scarabs out and start building up a Necromonlith inside the base over yonder. Which, to be honest, in hindsight, that's probably where they should have really built at least one of the monoliths. But Bill Scott's going to build up over here. While this is going on, a whole smorgasbord of... Oh, Jesus Christ. Yep. Lots of action going on over here. As the tower moving into the Imperial Guard base. Taking out all their tech buildings. Greater Narlok. Taking out the Mechanized Command. Yeah, in a, in a, in a turn up for the books. While the bottom left team were going for the top team. The right hand side team has been going for the... Left team, a perfect circle of violence going on here as the Great Analog slams down on the field command. Phoenix throws out a nice 4v2. There's the problem in these kinds of games. All is fair in Love and Dawn of War. Necromonlith managing to narrowly survive as the Space Marines have had to pull back to defend their own honour. Towler, with a good amount of Harbinger drones, constantly being slammed... Ah, I, aha! I, I quite like that, actually. It's almost like how the Orcs were doing it. Just inf infinity. Yeah, the, the, the infinity drones, shall we say. Coming in constantly, firing away. And these Guardsmen, they could have they could have had an impregnable wall of last fire if they chose to. But they decided to just only have vehicles for reasons beyond my ken. Warboss standing by his pet dog, the Squigoth, aiming down the barrel of his gun at these Terminators. And it's hard to really tell who's, who's got the advantage at the moment. Because the Necrons over here, they've got obviously smashed in. Guardsmen over here, they've got smashed in. I mean, to be honest, the, the red team over here is looking the strongest at the moment. They've got their units online. I mean, yeah, the Space Marine player is struggling a little bit. But the Tau might be able to hold them off. Fire all guns. Terminator's taking care of these Slugger boys. Whereas the Terminator squad is doing the same from a distance. Looted Lehman Rust tanks. Moving into the base. The squig off just just tearing the floor up. You quite like the sounds that the squig off makes. Our duty calls. <laughs> yeah, very, a very aesthetically pleasing attack animation. Two spell tries to get back up again and then goes back to bed. Good attempt. Got a big blue for coming down. Big. War boss running away from its blue touch. Well, this is going on. The orcs are being attacked by something. I'm not sure what. Oh, a, har a singular harbinger drone. That's nice. Doom Spider collecting all the dead and dying. Land Raider keeping in here. I do quite like this. Not committing too much of a force in here. Just um. Oh. Um. Ah, you. <laughs> Don't do it, Anakin. I have the high ground. That is, uh... How did they get up here? I assume just like a general explosion and whatnot. But... Amazing. 
Good stuff. Anyway, Imperial Guard player, he's not he's not getting back anytime soon. It's just all about this engagement in the middle. Good amount of fire warriors firing away into these orcs. And no matter how many orcs you have around here, they are gonna fall quick and sharpish to the plasma rifles of the Tau. Quick off seems to have gone down. Space Marine losing much of their base. Great analog there. Screening the fire warriors from the slugger boys. And yeah, I don't think that the build speed of the slugger boys will actually keep up with the sheer amount of death that will come towards them if they don't adapt to the fire warriors. I mean, what would you do against that kind of line? I mean, I suppose, I mean, I suppose the fire bombers, they can blow them up and not necessarily kill them, but just like get them on their feet. Uh, Slinger94, I do believe he was the Imperial Guard player, has been kicked out, so he has had his all. Yeah, I think he's just quit, essentially. So, the bottom left-hand team. While favourites at the beginning for having a big economy, did not use their economy well. And were annihilated first from this match. Although, they, the Imperial Fist player is still there. So it's still all to play for. We have seen weirder things happen. War boss goes down. Tau have now managed to finally staunch the bleeding of the Space Marine player for now. We'll have to rebuild. Let's have a look at the economy. Necrons are 60% and 140. Getting their full squad cap back. It's a good recovering. Art player 136 and 171. Uh, Red Space Marines 1, 2, 3, and 101. Uh, Tau over here, 171 and 122. And Jesus Christ, that is a lot of... All 10 frames activated at the moment on my computer. As we just see, Pathfinders, Stealth Suits, doing what they can. Necron Lord throwing down a John Cena beam, but will it be enough? He is going to be shot down like a sack of spuds. Dear oh dear, being turned into the essence of the Deceiver. Gonna turn some of these out against them, their allies. While this is going on, the Imperial Fists are coming back for some revenge. We'll try and focus down this Land Raider and the Terminators as the Orcs continue the never-ending push into the Space Marine base. Dove 8, Restore Monolith as well, nearby. Might want to send that in. Into the thick of it, into the freight. Our duty calls might be slow. Down. The pathing for it might be terrible. But it can keep a constant amount of Necron warriors on the field. And to be honest, we haven't really seen that much in the way of infantry. For the Necron Lord. Or the Necron player, sorry. But where... Where are their infantry? Obviously, oh, ah, have they, are they just going to spam flayed ones? That might be actually that might that might be the way to do it. Orcs do their general charge into the firing line of the fire warriors, and then all the flayed ones come down from behind, forcing them to either retreat or or die. Really, that might be the way forward. Big old orbital bombardment being thrown down over here. Flayed ones in the oh, but <laughs> never mind. Uh, all the flayed ones are just going to go into the base over here. And try and focus down. Ah, they're going to focus on the stronghold and the other Space Marine player buildings to try and prevent him from getting got. Oh, sorry, not that. Those are those are not the words I wanted to use. Um, prevent him from being able to rebuild. Big old blue muffin shaped cloud going on in the middle of these flayed ones. Do a fair bit of damage, but. A lot of them do just get straight back up. Orcs still playing around over on this side. Basically player almost having his entire base wiped out. He has managed to rebuild a lot of his tech buildings over here. We get another library now just for good measure.
Yeah, those flayed ones have managed to take the attention away from the, the Orc player. Stand us. Which is good. That's nice. Land Raider for the Red Marines have been deaded. And now a official proper Necromonlith has teleported in. Going to keep his allies, well, sorry, his enemies, painted in constant green. Wow, that does not do well for my eyes. That is very bright. But very aesthetically pleasing at the same time. Greta Narlock is going to come out and see if he can knock on the front doors of this monolith. Bash gets moving around in. Now look, being cock blocked by his own models there. Can't quite get in. There we go. Almost in combat. He just needs a little bit closer. Oh, give him a kiss. Almost. There we go. He's done it. Been painted green. We give it a sniff and watch it slowly but surely move away. Well, that was a bit anticlimactic, but hey up. Oh, boss having a bit of a run over yonder. Just going to focus down on this power farm here. Do have another orbital artillery coming in. We'll absolutely wipe all these orcs if they stay too close to it. I'll go to retreat chasing after this grit and Arlock. Yeah, they get that many kills with that one. Well, that's fine, we forgive them. All morale over here being absolutely tanked. As Restore Monolith continues to fire its gorse cannons. And some builder scabs around the backside as well, keeping it fighting fit. Power generators for the Red Marines more or less been totally wiped out. The stronghold will as well. Yellow Marines are just are just happy to be here, really. I don't think that. Oh, I suppose they could. Oh, the the um. How would I say the? Now that this area has been defeated, the tower player can just expand over to this side and gain more economy, allowing them to field more. Well, not field, not field more. We've all reached maximum capacity, but being able to replenish their their dudes as much as possible. Strong old for the Red Marines going to go down, and now the Orcs can start expanding onto this side of the map as well. I suppose once the economy gets really, really good, you can start spamming out knobs rather than slugger boys. The Yellow Marine, though, still being a pain in the backside. Doing what he can do. Great and Arlok, in the middle of all sorts of mischief here. Oh, that was great. Firing away are these flash gates. Slugger boys. Thumping at the ankles with their choppers. The Greta Narlock will go down. Falling flat on its front. Flash gates were going to go around on this side for reasons beyond my Kent. Oh, probably checking out to see if this area was also free for listing posts and whatnot. But no, the Imperial Fists are still there. Minding their own business. Well, apart from being pained to the Tau. But who doesn't want to just annoy the Tau every now and then? We've got, we've got three restore monoliths. I mean, two of them are fake, but that's still a lot of green. Cut them 
Well, I suppose one way to deal with them is just to have a big old bar orbital bombardment right in the middle. Constant Harbinger drones being sent to the front. At the end of this, we will have to see the end screen just to see what the kill count for all players were by the end of this. I imagine the town and space being played. I've certainly got a couple of numbers to shout about. Must be in the thousands, surely. Must be. There's some crew tox moving down into the middle, going to join the the freight. Grey knights standing firm. Another big blue fur. Oh, a blue fur over here. It'll be going somewhere. This squad of necro warriors might want to get out of there while they're still alive. Now they will be hit. Flash gets are on the flanks. Certainly focus firing these crew talks, the valuable targets of the Tau. Not sure what the... Let's have a look at the economies really quick again. Uh, 76, 17 uh, The orc players got... Oh, that's a very orky looking. Love the um, spacing out the war banners as well. Very aesthetically pleasing. Um, their, their, their economy's fine. It's all good. Space beam player, their economy is less fine. They're not having a great time. Uh, Tau player. I mean, the economy's fine. It's doing all right. It's the kind of numbers where they can spam things out. And they don't need the float. Um, Imperial Guard, obviously zero. Basically, play over here, 90 and 21, so... Yeah, the Northern team seem to have the economic advantage quite considerably. They're the only team at the moment with both team members having a significant amount of money. Rutox is doing what it can, but the Necron Monolith has been infiltrated. Can't see it, even though you know exactly where it is. I mean, imagine that you're, you're, you're an Imperial Guard player, you're, or, or Guardsman, sorry. You walk through the fields, you see absolutely nothing, and then all of a sudden, there's this big green lightning bolt comes from out of nowhere. It's not what you want, really. Essence of the Deceiver, once again on the field. Creating more and more fake units. Turning the power against each other. And yeah, the Orc and Necron Menace have now pushed over towards the front of the tower base. Orcs are just expanding their influence, bringing more boys' huts out. Yeah, the, uh, the Tau player and the Space Room player are going to have to pull out some serious juju if they want to come out on top on this. Storm Monolith, is it a real one? Is it a real one? Uh, one of them are. I hope it moved the, uh, the Storm Monolith in first. So now the, ah, the Tau player is going to focus fire down on this uh, the Storm Monolith here. Ooh, you tricksy devil. You deceiver, you. Stealth suits once again are going to jump in over on this side. I think they've realised that that one's the actual real Restore Monolith. They say. For jumping away. Heavy Destroyer out on the field. Burke is firing on these Harbinger drone. Or drone har, har. Bloody hell. Drone Harbingers. I don't, that, that, don't know why that word was so difficult to say. I suppose I've been talking for about an hour and 15 minutes constantly now, so... I'm allowed for my voice to get a little bit... A little bit waxing and waning. And it does look like the... Who just died? It's... Ah, oh, Space Beat player over here. Has failed in his task to defend home and half.
but it does look like that the northern team, the Orcs and Necrons, are going to pull it out for the win. Tower player is going to surrender, which means the only team left for the Orcs and Necrons to kill are the Space Marines over here. And we will we will fast forward it. We will see. We will watch their inevitable demise, but we won't we won't drag it out too long. As this game's already been quite quite long enough, and you've had your fill for today. Seven videos in one week. Not normally this busy, but there we go. Committing to the bit, committing to the channel. That's that's all I've got left, really. There we go. Absolute chaos and madness. Also, want to see that end screen as well. Want to see how many dead orcs there are. Yeah, a valiant last stand, but not, it wasn't meant to be. Force of the Imperium can't stand up against such hate and madness. Chapel Barracks, last thing to go down, and there we go. So let's have a, let's have a look at the end screen shall we so uh let's have a look so alchemist space marines got the most military i assume because he killed the most he just killed 1859 uh army size 2600 does it tell you how many units you yeah <laughs> hell's bells 2493 orcs and orc vehicles been destroyed during that game so absolute insanity cool well thank you for joining us in this 78 minute long game uh, mine's been Miss Lunchak, please always never chat. I'll see you in a bit. Peace.